Hey everybody, this is Nick from Exploring Audio. For the next video, I just wanted to give a brief introduction because this video kind of has a uh, unique history to it. It was about four years ago that we filmed this at my friend Jim's house, and when I got home with the files, I tried to open them up on my computer and they just wouldn't open at all. Um, and it wasn't until I got the newest version of Final Cut recently that I just happened to coincidentally try to open them again and they opened and were able to be edited perfectly. So here it is, uh, four years late. Um, there's some issues with the audio and some issues with the video, so uh, be a little bit forgiving. But um, I'm going to be trying to post a lot more new LSDJ content in the coming months, so if you enjoy this kind of thing, please feel free to subscribe. Thank you very much. I use LSDJ on a Game Boy. My name is Danimal Cannon. Thank you so much, guys.
Thank you, guys. Woo! Hi, guys. I'm Dan Cannon. I'm here with some guys from the Revengineers over in Rochester. We're playing a show tonight, but I was going to go over one of my LSDJ tracks um, in some detail, and they were going to ask some questions. We're going to go over some of the things I did in it. As you can see, I'm kind of disorganized here, because uh, I tend to write individual sections so I can loop them. Um, see how there's like this here? There's like a whole section there, there's another section, then I go and paste them back in um, to the song later. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so anyways, um... What's this, the name of the song? This is Roots. This will be the title track off my uh, full length, which will be out soon. Soon. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I guess I'm just going to play like a section of the song and then kind of go over some of the things I did in it. Uh, this first section is actually a little extended because it's kind of my pump up part live where I'm like pumping up people, telling them to do things. But uh, that's just the first little part. Anyways. <laughs> section of the song is very inspired by the Mega Man 3 intro actually. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things I did is I this right here has a lot of channel economy on. Actually, this whole first section is actually just two channels. It's just my noise channel, my wave channel, which is... Um, and uh, I use that kind of classic, I don't know, Mega Man sound of like, uh, like that tom drop. I don't know that. You know what I'm talking about? Um, stole that from a lot of Mega Man games, but... I threw in a bass line in there as well, also with kick drum. So the kick drum, like, kind of like snare, or I don't know what that is, but it's uh, it's just the big boom. And then there's also the bass line in there. And in order to get the bass line to actually like sound like two notes are playing here, like, because it has that gallop, that Mega Man gallop, I had to put in the kill commands here so they actually separate the notes out. If you take them out, they actually, like, kind of uh, uh, don't actually... See so yeah, how they don't really. Um, the kill commands actually just help separate the notes out a lot. I use a pitch bend here. It's F4. You can kind of. You just kind of have to find the right one that works for you, the tempo you're working at. Um, and I actually threw in uh, some fifths in here too. So that's the A and the D. And. And it kind of gives that almost power chord feel like it, it's just more of implied. So it's like a fifth is playing on top of it. Um, and then when it comes in, then I... And see the, hear those notes up top of... Just that... Duh, 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 duh. Up here, I'm just kind of implying some chords in there. It's, it's Instead of just having like a static bass line, like, it just gives it a little bit more melodic content. And then for uh, the noise channel... Um, I, actually, I think I actually stole this from Wiz Wars, um, but uh, I have some like kind of like crunchy notes to start off each beat. And what I did for that is that OD right here, and uh, that's actually a table that just like kind of modulates the shape like uh, downward into more like bassier territory. You know, like you can get like lower sounding white noise. Um, and what it does is I put the hop command here, so it, it's constantly just cycling through those two, meaning it just keeps going further and further down. Um, like it's probably actually, I don't know, it might even go through that like several times. Um, but that's why I put that hop command there. Let's see. 
what it would sound like without it. So it like doesn't go down as far. You sort of double the drums on the noise and the wave channel. Yes, actually, um, and you can't really get a very bassy sound on the wave channel, or not the wave channel, the uh, the noise channel. Mm -hmm. But it just kind of has this low crunchy thing that just adds a little bit of texture. Um, like there isn't actually that much bass going on there, but but all together it really adds a, a lot of sound. Um, what I like to do is I like to take like two channels and make something sounding big with just them, and then I can just like add more on top of it. And a lot of times it's just like, oh, this sounds pretty big, and like, oh, it sounds like there's an extra Game Boy playing or something. Cause... So you like restrict yourself to two channels to start to help force yourself to make it as heavy as you can using what you have available. Yeah, I mean, if you if you, like, use all your channels right away, you have nowhere to grow when you're writing. Right, so you get it as heavy as you can with two, and then, wait, I still have two more channels. To right, right, or, or three or whatever. Right. Actually, I, I did this part with with three channels. Um... <laughs> this uh, this P uh, Pulse Wave 1, I'm actually just uh, doing uh, an octave over the top to make it sound a little better. And that's just kind of adding a little bit on top of it. It's, it's a bit quieter, but it just adds a little bit more. What's that, 19? All right, let's see what that sounds like without it. Gives it just a little bit more sonic character when you're putting it together. And so I had an extra channel. I was like, oh, I can make this a little bit more interesting. And then what I do is, at certain points, I come back in with harmonies, I change the instrument. So, it was that. What's going on in the, um, uh, in that instrument? There's right like an echo on that? Um, or what is that? Yeah, actually. This right here, um, where did I do that manual? Yeah, that's a manual single channel echo, which you use envelope commands to kind of like re-trigger it. Um, the same note. I think that's why I have that 16 there. If so I get rid of that. You need that envelope command there to re-trigger it? Uh, the it envelope quieter. command will make it quieter, make it quieter oh, but okay. yeah. Um, Makes sense. But, but having that 16 in there with no note, mm -hmm. it just kind of re-triggers the... Uh, um, the table that I have on it, mm -hmm. which has a, a wave modulation or duty cycle modulation. I also have a left right panning on it. Um, makes it a little thicker. And, mm -hmm. uh, and then the A commands just sends it to table zero, which is nothing. So it, it only happens at the beginning of the note. Mm -hmm. So it just has that mm -hmm. pluck sound. So that's just uh, an example of like, I don't know, coming up with interesting sounds. And then I use a, an envelope there to like make it kind of fade back in. So it has just kind of an interesting. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, it's just um, it's like a reverse swell. Yeah, um, like violins will do a lot of that sort of stuff where they can kind of just play with their yeah. like how hard they're playing, like mid notes. Play expressively. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, lots of stuff like that. Um, and then for the next part, I have these long lines that I totally stole from the Mega Man 3 intro. Um, a couple other things you might have seen in my other stuff is a lot of times I'll do these snare rolls with kill commands in there to make them separate again. My snare, um, I like to have like a really uh, low noise that ends high, 
If that makes any sense, by using the shape commands in a table. Um, like this is, if I get rid of all these, see it's S O one. Like that's as low, that's the note that it starts at, but what I have to make it do is I just modulate it up a bunch of times. Let's see, it's an SO1. And you can hear the second half of it is a bit higher, to, like <clears throat> it has like a little tail to it. Um, and again, I had a lot of times just giving stuff like a table with a little bit of left right thing um, going on, it, uh, Makes it sound bigger, and I don't know. A lot of times, I like to have a big sounding snare. It just punches more. When you're working on wave channel stuff, mm -hmm. how much do you use the synth screen versus like the frames? You know what I mean. Um, how much do you write in, draw in your own wave stuff? Um, I do like to draw in my own wave stuff, but uh, a lot of times I'll end up using the manual. Uh, with no waveform modulation, it won't modulate through. Uh, it's really, I know how to use it, it's just really confusing. Um, and I find that, like, the best, like, the thickest tones tend to be just these very, um, that is not what I thought it was. Yeah, it is. Instrument 7, yeah, this is, uh, this is the waveform, apparently, that I'm using for that. And, and, that, that's the bass tone I have right here, and it probably looks like a big mess, but the reason I did that is because um, if the notes were just all super low notes, they wouldn't stick out with those really fast notes, mm -hmm. those gallop notes. Um, tutorial where we talked about using the synth screen to sort of get something close to what you want and then going in to like edit it a little bit to draw your own stuff. Um, yeah, that's actually a lot of times what I do. I don't remember exactly how I came up with this one in particular, mm -hmm. but um, I do like messing with the manual waveform. Mm -hmm. um, and this is almost like a square wave with lots of overtones. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's a big mess. But I like it. It sounds good. It sounds a little grimy. Um, it's got some growl on it. And, I don't know, I tend to use the manual, though, instead of, uh, a lot of the modulating ones, like, mm -hmm. uh, or the, or the ping pong and the loop and, and the once. I don't know, uh, maybe because I'm lazy, maybe. But it's very complicated to do the, uh, the stepping modulation. Yeah. Like, you really need to know your wave. You were trying to show me some of that stuff once, but, like, that was the one thing that... Continues to confuse me too. I I understand the concept, but it's a lot of it's a lot of work too to get it to sound good. And it's also not very intuitive. Yeah, the one trick that I sort of do with that is like I'll have it play through once, and then I'll start on the first frame with just like a basic square wave, and then I'll with each successive frame I make it more distorted and right move them around, you know, so it gets like weirder as it goes. Um. But anyways, on the next section, um, which is. Uh, this two and three here on pulse wave two. Um, um, and I use a really weird pattern with like every third sixteenth node. I switched it just so it's like not followable. It's just like this big mess of stereo changing. Mm -hmm. um, but that's kind of like my backing. Uh, to it's it's it actually is like implying the chords. <laughs> Um, this is really classic Daniel Cannon right here, um, like just with this bass line here.
pretty much um, I do a lot of things where I put the bass note right next to the bass drum and they sound like they hit together mm -hmm. and it's just economizing a bass drum and a bass instrument. Um, like anytime this two is here, like this is in the middle of a, like a bunch of hits right here and then... Um, And I don't know. I mean, that that note's in a really weird spot, but since it's you know in the middle of a bunch of bass drum notes, your brain just kind of makes it all think that they're all playing at the same time. Um, again, you're gonna see I use kill commands constantly when there's lots of notes together, so that they separate separate out more. Um, but I like doing a lot of bends on bass notes because um, the especially when you have it on uh, the HF, which I just learned about. If you change the vibrato type. You change the speed at which things bend. Oh wow! Because everything, yeah, um, you can change it to like other things, um, which I actually didn't know until very recently. Because I would always like, oh, why do my bends happen so fast? Mm -hmm. The higher you go, the faster you bend. Mm -hmm. So um, on these low notes here, though, they bend really nice and like. It's like, oh no. Um, <laughs> um, and I also do a lot of octave stuff on bass. Um, because, I don't know, when you get really, try to get too fancy with chords, sometimes that, I don't know, you don't know which notes to hit, just octaves are always safe. <laughs> um, so, if you ever like want to make something more interesting, just throw lots of octaves into it. Um, also, a lot of times I'll do higher octaves on the, the kick drum um, to make them almost sound like they're descending. Um, it's a kind of a subtle change. Uh, a lot of times, like, it's almost like toms going down. Um, I don't really do it. Um, well, it, it, it's kind of like when you, what you talk about in your other video, too, where it kind of humanizes it, too, by yeah, yeah. Right. varying the tone. Um, on the noise channel, I do a lot of humanization, too. Um, and every single one of these uh, these envelope commands, you know, it's... It's all about creating a, like a drum sound that's very human, and like a real person is actually like. Yeah. The first hits louder. You know. A lot of times, it's alternating loud and soft hits mm -hmm. um, because a real human does not hit like a machine gun. Mm -hmm. um, although that sound is cool sometimes too. <laughs> but um, I also throw in some of those uh, those looped. Uh, I don't I don't know exactly what they are. They're like different noises. They're almost like tonal noise channels. That it's uh, this note right here. That's, uh, um, let's see. Yeah, that note right there. And I also use it in uh, another part of the. Let's see. And it's um, throwing in those little things in there, they kind of just make it interesting. Uh, um. I also occasionally use like backward symbols, which also you can do with like envelopes. Um, and it's, I don't know, I just like doing all sorts of weird, interesting things mm -hmm. all the time. Um, because if you stay static and do the same instruments and the same things all the time, it gets really boring. But if you just, I'm, we have such a limited palette to use on LSDJ that like you kind of have to do everything you can to keep it interesting. Um, on the leads, I also humanize things. Um. So on that, um, two things on that is I made a table on it, um, and I put a hop command here so that it repeats, and so it kind of has that echo sound where it changes the. Uh, the wave modulation, it also puts wacky octaves on it. Octave um, up and octave down. Yeah. See, that doesn't sound anywhere near as interesting. And I put the vibrato, I love vibrato, it's just kind of like you're playing a regular instrument, like a real instrument. <laughs> um, and then, um, a lot of these, like, little bends here is just, uh, you know, it's how I would play it on the guitar. 
Um, that actually, like, isn't even, it's almost like just sliding into a note, like that after the G there. Um, and same thing, like, it'll go down from the G to this F um, pretty quickly. But I put a lot of, like, little bends and stuff in there, because that's how I would play it on the guitar. I draw a lot of experience from that. Um, how do you know how much room to leave for your guitar playing, too? Um, live? Yeah, I mean, like, when you're programming this... That's a total about? afterthought 90% of the time. Okay. And, uh, I write the songs to stand by themselves on LSDJ, and then when I perform them live, I'm worried I'm going to step all over everything that I did. Um, it, but then people started yelling at me for playing my, not my guitar too quietly. Um, and so they, they said they like it more when the guitar is louder, so, um, I've been playing around with that. It's kind of a balance for me. Let's see what we got going on here. Um, I have another instrument I actually created for a second half of leads. That one sounds like a 15% square wave. Um, that has all sorts of single channel echo in it with that E15. Um, if I get rid of that, that'll sound not nearly as cool. Let's see. See, so like how it <laughs> yeah. sounds not as awesome. You Lots know, on, on this instrument, how you have it sort of like, um, I don't know what it is, like a tremolo kind of effect? Or like the. Da -da 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 -da. That's another. Uh, I did kind of the same thing I did on the other instrument. Mm -hmm. uh, I modulate here for the pluck sound. Mm -hmm. um, but then I, I put the hop in a different spot. Um, mm -hmm. So let's see if it's. Uh, <laughs> I was gonna say because it's yeah um, because when you put the hop on the six yeah that means there's the same number of ticks per beat as the groove right right so it's almost like it's picking every note almost yeah um like it's double picking everything um I don't know it's just Every once in a while, like, I just need to create something that sounds not like a really bland square wave. Like, it's got to have more interesting stuff to it. So, you, I mean, when you put a table on something, you can really just play with it a lot. Um, play with bends, play with octaves. Um, uh, is there any octaves on that one? No, there isn't, actually. <laughs> Uh, that one I chose not to, but on the other one I did, you know, uh, you can really just play around with that stuff and come up with interesting sounds. Um, so, I, I guess I'll move on to the next section unless you guys had any more questions about this. Yeah, sure. Okay. That's my thrash metal section. <laughs> um, I actually wrote that as uh, in this really old band that I had. Um, and it's like completely arranged for a guitar. Um, I start off with just the two instruments. So with that, um, I want to hear those toms. Yeah. You do. <laughs> I love those. I think line 16, the very first part of it, it sounds like a bass drop almost. 
Oh, oh yeah, that that's that's just that's a, a treble drop. Actually. Uh, oh, oops. Sorry. Yeah, it just um, if you end up doing a legato command and mm -hmm. put no note after it right, yeah, for yeah, it yeah. to go, it just goes down. You can use a pitch drop as well. It's it'll do the same thing. Mm -hmm. But um, I, yeah, I went up like two octaves there. <laughs> Is there a reason you use one over the other versus um, the other? Versus the no, not really. Okay. Um, legato will only go down though if you uh, don't push. Oh something. really? Yeah. Um, unless you put it up there for it to go up to. Okay. I don't. Not really a good reason why not. Um, I also make it fade out with the M. This is directly arranged. It'll be like guitar or stuff. Um. Those are the D's, and then I think I have the A's over here, which is the fifths. And so it just ends up sounding like a guitar. Um, I'll show you those toms. Let's see. Where are you, Where are you down? down? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. There we go. <laughs> um, yeah, those are all pitch bends. Um, I had to play with, I don't know, I went with almost like a sine wave that has like a bunch of extra noise in it. Um, because, I don't know, I've, uh, sine waves for whatever reason kind of sound like toms. Uh, it's kind of like a triangle wave on the NES. Um, it's close enough anyways. But, uh, I don't know. I, uh, and what I did is I just went down from like E7 to D6 or whatever, and it just has that descending tom roll. Um, that sounds pretty badass. Like I, I agree. Noise. It does sound pretty badass. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, that's one of the things that the Game Boys are good at is just, you know, like the badass noises, like the toms and the pitch drops, uh, like. Let's see. Hold on. That, that, um, so anyways, when it finally actually all comes in, um, I actually changed the instrument and this one is going to be panned to the right. Um, that's the fifth. And then this one is the root and that's going to be panned to the left. So you have that left, right panning almost like, um, like, when you're recording guitars, a lot of times the rhythm guitars are panned left and right. Well, I kind of just do that with the two different instruments, and then up the middle I have the bass. Um, and then it kind of all just fills out like it's all, all supposed to be together. It's like a trick I came up with on Polyrath, where I was like, I'm just going to arrange this exactly how I would like with guitars, except one will be playing the fifth and the other will be playing the root. Um, it, I pretty much stole that from recording. And again, you know, the drums are very much humanized. It's, I, you know, I was kind of going for a ride cymbal sound, but it kind of sounds like a hi-hat. Um, and... Oh, one thing I did want to say is, um, this is going to be more apparent in the next section, but... Um, you can kind of get away with, like, losing a lot of the notes in the bass channel with the kick drum there. You just, like, kind of forget about them. Um, and, like, you, your brain will fit in the rest. Let's see. So it'll be, like... See how that note, like, cuts back in? Um, like, that just sounds awkward and weird, but in the actual mix, your brain doesn't really care. Um, and then in the next section, it even gets weirder. But if you listen to the bass channel by itself, it's... But you can leave out like the beginnings of notes to insert a bass drum with your bass instrument all the time. It 
works really well. Like those notes are actually playing late, um, but nobody cares. Um, <laughs> it's kind of funny how you can get away, like you can get away with a lot more than you think you can once you start like ambitiously doing channel economy. Um, in fact, it even does that more when I insert those those bass drops. <laughs> Like those bass drops, like, like the bass instrument's completely cutting out, but since the bass drop takes so much precedence in the mix that your brain doesn't really care, and the rest of the notes are really just holding it together. So, like, you know, you'd think it'd be, you'd need another channel, but by doing, like, wacky channel economy stuff, you can get away with a whole lot of stuff. Um... are your like sort of number one tool for humanizing things no the, my envelope is my number one tool for humanizing okay. things. kill command is fast notes separating out so you can actually tear, take them and like hear them apart mm -hmm. otherwise they all blend together but i mean fresh. i noticed that you oftentimes will vary the value you're using for the kill command and is the purpose of that to humanize it a little more um or do you, I mean, I'm wondering what the method to your madness in terms of defining how many ticks for each kill command is. If you, uh -oh. like, consciously think about staggering them to make it not sound, like, the same. Um, like let's gun. see. Uh, essentially, it's, like, how much of the note do you want to actually, like, cut through? Right. Um, like, if I bring this down to one, you're barely going to be able to tell. It'll just sound like a click. Um, so, if you want, like, more of the actual sound to cut through, then, you know, you can use a larger value. I think there's six ticks in between each one. Yep. So I can... <laughs> and you kind of just play, you kind of have to just listen to each section and see which one you're using. I couldn't tell you why these kill commands are here. I don't know why. But they work. So, uh, they just have that staccato sound. Um. I don't know, I mean, I can make it more staccato and it'll be fine. I guess I just never really thought about using, I mean, I love using kill commands on my, you know, tonal instruments, but I guess I never really thought of using them extensively in the noise channel. Maybe that's why my noise channel stuff has always sounded a little bit boring. Um, and I actually had that criticism a lot early on, as people were telling me, like, oh, you have good stuff, but your noise channel needs some work. And it wasn't until I actually dissected some people's, like, Liz Wars of save files, and I was like, oh, wow, I can do so much more. Mm -hmm. You know, look at, he puts just as much effort into that as I do on, like, Alright. Did you guys have any more questions on the thrash metal section? Um, can I just see that the end of one of those measures has like a really quick, like, I don't know. It's oh. by itself. It's solo right now. Oh, right in here? Yeah. Is it on the noise channel, or? Yeah. Let's see. Oh, yeah. The plants. Yeah. It's just... Those are all snare rolls, actually. And, <laughs> um, the thing is, is you hear a left rightness to it, because it's cutting it off, like, right at the beginning of the table. And, like, so you, you'll hear kind of like this a whole lot get, more yeah. than you normally would mm -hmm. because I'm cutting it off with the kill commands. Mm -hmm. um, and also you'll notice that I do different octaves of the snare. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it just kind of, like, makes it a little bit different. Sound. Almost, again, it's another way of humanizing mm -hmm. it. Like, it just sounds different mm -hmm. when you're doing it. They were all um, the same snare. See how the other ones stand out a bit yeah, more? A little more dynamic. Yeah. It's just a way of making it more interesting. Uh, so the next section is my uh, my classical breakdown, I think. I think <laughs> that's what it is. Yeah. Or, yeah, I'll play the last one.
that's a whole lot mm -hmm. in one uh, thing. But the classical section, mm -hmm. I actually we're only using two channels. Um, I have the. <laughs> more of those like fades in, kind of mm -hmm. like a, a violin would. Um, I think those actually don't have any cable on it. Um, but uh, I just wanted something kind of dastardly and soft sound. And then the other instrument, I put a, a table with vibrato on it. Um, and also it uses a lot of single channel echo. Um, we're using that E command with nothing there. So that has like a vibrato of like 7 4 on it, and. Just kind of distorts it. Yeah. It sounds evil. Oh. See, that's what it sounds like without it. Yeah, yeah, just gives it a little growl to it. Have you studied any classical guitar music? Eh, not really. <laughs> I mean, yes and no. I play with people who have, so. Okay. Um, for the bass, when that comes in, I tried to go for like kind of like a finger pick style bass. Um, so I went with uh, a manual, like almost like a sine wave with like a little bit of stuff going on here. Uh, but the sine waves sound very smooth. They don't have like that growl in there. Uh, so it's just almost like a finger bass. And also, um, the backing arpeggios have left and right action going on. I actually switched the instruments. Because a lot of times you can get clicking. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Like when you do, uh, you know what I'm talking about? There's clicking when you do like uh, the O command. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know if this actually works better, but I like to think it does. Um, um, that might be a BGB thing. I don't know if there's actually less clicking on the thing. I don't remember. Um, on the actual Game Boy. But, uh, yeah, I just do do the chords I want. I'll do this a lot of times with chords uh, in the background and make those have left or right action to create a nice stereo. Piece. And if you like listen to the actual track, they're actually not all that prevalent. They're kind of in the background. Okay. So at this point in the song, you'll notice that I'm actually pretty far. You can actually only do 256 tracks or 256 phrases mm -hmm. in this song, um, in any LSTJ song. And FF is as far as you can go. And I'm at DD here. And I have like minutes to go. Um, so you'll notice that I do a lot of interesting things now where I start to go, oh shit, I can't use a new phrase for everything I want to do. Um, so for like the next section, um, I'll, I do the exact same thing except an octave up um, by using the transpose command, and I've used the shit out of this transpose command. Yeah. Um, I'll show you in other parts later in the song, but so. So, um, I think I wrote a solo here. Pretty cool. Um, there's all sorts of expressions in here, like lots of vibrato. I actually make the vibrato get wider as, as it gets later. And then what I do a lot of times, um, I when I first started, I used to just drop notes off, like um, like meaning I would just pitch bend them down at the end. But now I started putting envelopes that make them fade out just a little bit at the end of the note. Like, I don't know, there's like a delay pedal on it or something, or reverb or something, so... Like, that note, you know, like, it's a very strong note, but then it starts fading out near the end. Um, I'll do that on this one here as well. Um, and then I'll put single channel echo, like, any time I can in there, just to make it, I don't know, a little bit pluckier, a little bit... Like not as interesting sounding um, when I remove them. Um, it just sounds much flatter, but it's way more dynamic when you have like single channel echo. So a lot of times, like even right here, I'll just put it in. For um, 
Um, and you can really just go nuts with that, which I do. Um, and, I don't know, it's just about creating something that sounds more interesting when you're... Um, I also, with here, I didn't actually put anything in the instrument here, and so it doesn't re-trigger my table, which has a little pluck sound on it, by doing the, uh, the modulation here, because I have a table attached to that instrument. And by not putting an instrument, it, it like doesn't re-trigger. And that that's cool, but I wanted more of a subtle thing in there by not putting that there. Uh, same thing with uh, not putting an instrument here. Like it doesn't re-trigger that pluck there, so it's like more, it's more of a straight bend. And you can do a lot of things like that with uh, n not pick, putting notes there. Um, I think at the very end of the solo. I do a legato section. Um, let's see, I think it's the next one actually. And what I do is I actually only um, pick like that first note, or quote unquote pick it. Um, like it's all just the note changing without that pluck sound there. So it's almost like a legato. It almost sounds exactly like how I would if I tapped it mm. on my guitar. And I draw a lot of knowledge from that out. Um, on that big long solo section, do you guys have any more questions? Or no? no. No. Okay, good. Very <laughs> self-explanatory. <laughs> Yay, happy. Okay, so what I do is I just into this section, and since I'm out of channels um, or out of phrases, essentially, or almost out of phrases, I think at this solo I'm at E8, which means I only have like 16 more possible <laughs> phrases, um, especially across four channels. That's a lot. So I end up actually repeating this part verbatim. So that part happens again. Um, but after that, I go into... I start... I had this idea of something to do, but at this point I have to reuse a lot of things. So there's a ton of recycling that I do. This section here is, let's see, remember that from earlier? Mm -hmm. Well, I just kind of only used two of the um, chords, and just alternate between those two. So that's, I've had no new phrases. This right here um, is actually only one phrase, where... What I do is I just... Uh, use the transpose command to do different notes. So... That lasts the whole measure. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I had to make a new one for that, because I wanted to do something deleted. But anyways, um, so... I abused the shit out of the transpose command, and so for this next section, um, I recorded these uh, one and two beat um, sections. So this is actually just, this has a hop command here, so there's that, and then the other one is, and then all I did was just use a ton of them. So th that whole section, which would have been four uh, different phrases, is actually just recycling two of them. And I also did that on this uh, as well. What also it let me do is change the notes so I could play with it um, on the transpose function. Now, did, uh, you, did you just count to make sure that fit in the time signature? Yeah, yeah, it took a little... Yeah. 
uh, trial and error. I think I actually wrote it like on guitar and then tried to figure out the pattern, or maybe I wrote it on here. I don't remember. Um, but I, I just it was kind of a trial and error thing right. to make sure it fit into the four. Well, because each phrase is like a measure or is like a beat long, like yeah. a quarter note, right? Um, it's 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 easier. It's easier. So it does, oh, and this one is two of them. Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, so it gets complicated. I had to like mess around a little bit um, until I found something good. But all every single drum beat in here is recycled from different parts in the song. So this one. <laughs> That sounds like I couldn't come up with a really interesting fill for there. But I actually stole that from that thrash metal part. <laughs> and that's the way that one of the measures ends. So I just like, uh, use that here too. It's actually the wrong instrument on the wrong channel. I just used the same instrument, or the same phrase on uh, the wave channel and the pulse channel. And they play them together and they sound kind of cool. Oh yeah, also on the wave channel I also transpose to change my bass note as well. Um, because on the other channel it's a, uh, yeah, zero and then this one's a whole set you have tons of chains left. So you can just do anything right from within like the chain screen, you don't have to worry about running out of those. Um, oh yeah, chains I don't have to worry about, instruments you don't have to worry about. The only things I ever run out of are, uh, individual phrases and instruments. Tables? Uh, and tables, I'm sorry, not instruments, tables. Uh, cause you can only go to one F, I think. Yeah. So, yeah, that's essentially the whole rest of the song. Um, I end up, I wanted to put a guitar solo, but I don't have enough, uh, things. So I actually recorded a guitar solo for the studio version. Nice. I was like, who cares? I'm just gonna throw an extra <laughs> instrument on top, cause, uh, whatever. I'll do it live. <laughs> But every single one of these drum beats is from earlier in the song. That's uh, from... And I don't know, it was just like, oh, I have to come up with uh, something. Like, I, I wanted to come up with new things, but I didn't have anything left. And so I had to do crazy shit like this. Um, and, I don't know, it's kind of interesting that this part wrote itself with what I had left to work with. I still have a couple phrases left, I might tune up this song a little bit more, but for the most part, um, also there's some failed sections. Um, so I've been meaning to mine those phrases, like, like this 22 right here, I think this right here, um, it actually isn't in the song, I came up with some section and didn't end up using it, and I think there's one other thing. I didn't end up using, which is um. Yeah, so anyways, don't put time commands in your song. Because, <laughs> uh, you forget that they're there. There we go, it's 170. And then if you don't remember what your tempo was. Yeah, you yeah. yeah. the uh, clean phrases command thing? What's the... You know, I haven't yet, because okay. I'm always afraid of it. I'm mm -hmm. afraid something's going to happen, and I'll hate everything, yeah, or yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's going to delete something that you're not using, but... Because it'll like, free up, like, the uh, yeah. phrases that aren't currently... that you had used and deleted, and then aren't on your screen anymore, right. you know? Um, and that's one of those things I've been meaning to do that in this track, but it kind of just wrote itself. Yeah. Uh, like, I don't know how much more I'm going to end up doing to this one, but... Um, I don't know, the thing with LSUJ is you have all these problems you have to work around, and then you end up coming up with creative solutions to it, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's, I don't know, uh, and that's just, you know, the first time I ran out of phrases, or came close to running out of phrases, you know, I think F4 is as far as, far as I went. Do you um, know about the, um, you put the, you put the zeros at the end so that way you have time to, like, hit the start button? And yeah, the, there's a T command, was it TFF? H, if you do HFF, oh, it, it stops, stops the song. The song. I've been meaning to do that, I just haven't. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, 
In fact, live, I usually fuck up and the song starts over. <laughs> yeah. I, it happened to us while we were practicing that's yesterday. Classic. Mm-hmm. Classic. Um, in fact, actually, with this, um, by not having anything on this zero zero here, it actually just continues the phrases that mm-hmm. I already had. So check this out. It's, I actually ended the song with a weird noise, which is just a continuation of, um, like, the tables. <laughs> Okay, that sounds way more consistent on an actual Game Boy, but... Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought it sounded awesome. Yeah. Right? <laughs> But uh, it was just like, uh, like, oh, whoops. The, it kept going. Yeah, it was a happy accident. Happy, I was like, no, I was well, that wet you know, noise is uh, cooler than the song. It's just going to say happy accident. accident. Yeah, so, itself. I don't know, a lot of times I'll accidentally, like, call together, like, in live mode or something, like, just messing around, like, two phrases that shouldn't be together, and be mm-hmm. like, oh, that gives me a new idea. <laughs> but, um, cool. do you have any questions about how to put that together? Or, mm-hmm. You doing this tonight? Yeah. Nice. Oh, yeah, yeah, so. I might open with this. There you go. Anyways, I'm Daniel Cannon, and this is a whole lot of LSTJ bullshit.